Hello! Hello, and welcome to a new feature I'm calling Uncle Derek's VHS Collection, because it's based around the VHS collection of my late Uncle Derek, which I inherited from him. Now, Uncle Derek liked his action films and television to the extent that in the uh, crematorium after he died, his coffin was carried along the aisle to the theme from the A-Team. And I'm not making this up, that is actually true. <laughs> he really liked his bloody films and stuff, did Uncle Derek. I'll show you a photo of him. Here he is with his dog, Patch. I haven't even decided um, what photo I'm going to use yet, but he was always with his dog, Patch, so um, that's a pretty safe bet. So, yeah, um, I've enlisted the help of internet movie man, Mr Oliver Harper. Hello, Oliver. Hello, Stuart. How are you doing, sir? Not so bad, thank you. Well... I've improved after watching some of these films, put it that way. <laughs> so I sent Oliver a list of what VHS tapes we've got and said, hey, pick a couple of these and then have a watch and we'll talk about what they were like. We'll explain them to each other so we don't have to both watch them. And, yeah, how did you find the experience overall? Uh, very, very boring and depressing. <laughs> uh, I, I made a huge mistake of thinking, oh, I, I googled some of the movies and found the cover, went, that looks pretty good. Oh, I'll be, oh, I'll be fine. Screw Stuart, he'll get the crap ones. Oh, no. <laughs> I got the worst ones. So, yeah, it's, it's like being a kid again when you choose the old, you know, video games on the Spectrum and Commodore. You get wowed by the cover. And it's what happened in the VHS shops. People yep. looked at the rental. Yeah, you'd yep. go in, oh, the cover on that one's good, and you end up, I don't know, renting fucking Rotor or something. <laughs> oh, dearie me. But yeah, um, in the words, or to paraphrase Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, you chose poorly. <laughs> I mean, you really did. I really you, did. you picked genuinely the worst film out of the lot. <laughs> Which I'm still very pleased with. Anyway, do introduce us to the first film which you watched. The first film is The Roller Blade 7. The Roller Blade 7. And look at the... Oh, God almighty, what is this? Derek, what did you spill on that? <laughs> oh, man. I should have cleaned... Oh, dear. The weird thing is, the lady on the front cover looks like the lady from the Goonies. It looks like she plays the mother. Oh, and yes. And she's in, like, uh, Monster Squad. She's in uh, Lethal Weapon. But it's not her. Oh, and the only rollerblade you can see is right at the bottom there. There's a tiny little bit of rollerblade. There, there um, is some rollerblade. Yeah, that's about it. And um, the from... US cover is a lot better than this one. Uh, but that's um, still a pretty exciting cover. You've got weird cyber knight. You've yes. got somebody with some sort of weapon you can't quite make out. Genuinely on rollerblades. It's from Canon Video. Uh, it's probably well. Yeah, they distributed it. They probably uh, picked up the distribution. Oh they, yes, they didn't New make Metro. this turd. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Was this turd made, or did it just appear one day? Um, <laughs> it's, it's, I know this film has a reputation, but we'll get on to that. In the year 2017 AD, machines rule the world. God, that was two years ago. What did I miss? <gasps> oh, God, they, they predicted Facebook. <laughs> So, yeah, looking on the back, I mean, you've got exciting stuff. They've got a woman in a bikini fighting Sephiroth. Um... Yeah, it, the, basically, the plot is, it's very simple. Like, he's got to go, uh, Scott Shaw, or Hawk, that's his character's name. Hawk. He's got to go rescue his sister from the evil clutches of the Pharaoh in this wasteland, which is based like Mad Max, but everyone's on rollerblades and skateboards. Okay. Which, you know, kind of, seeing people in their 30s on skateboards and rollerblades is a bit of a strange thing. Usually mm. teenagers, I mean, you know, professionals on skateboards, yeah, fair enough. Well, you can't be picky in a post-apocalyptic world. I suppose so, but he know? turns up on a motorbike. You're not allowed, in the, it, it, all the bad guys live in the, uh, the wheel zone. So, the wheel zone? Yeah, and everyone basically travels around on in those methods of uh, skateboards I and rollerblades. see, well, that's the thing. Oh, God, so we've got Joe Estevez in. Who is yeah. uh, famously Martin um, Sheen's younger brother? Ah, thank you. I, I said famously and then couldn't remember, so it couldn't be that bloody is famous. You got Frank Stallone. In? Yes, Frank Stallone. Who they don't advertise on the box. That's interesting. He's, Frank Stallone has been in a lot of rubbish, right? He has, and he's obviously produced a lot of songs as well that appeared in his obviously his brother's movies. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he plays. I think he, yeah, he plays the knight, Frank Stallone, and then the main villain who looks a bit like Vernon Wells from Mad Max and stuff, but. He's oh. not. But he's like, um, he's disabled, but he's dreams of uh, getting back on his skateboard. And he's like, he's like in his 60s. I don't, oh. think, I don't think an old geezer like that will be desperate to get back on his skateboard. But hey, ho. <laughs> just want to skateboard, just want to smash my knees one last time. <laughs> but what the most frustrating element of this movie is, obviously it's down to, because Stuart told me it was about this sort of zen film. Oh, yes, it's an example of <clears throat> zen filmmaking. So you make up on the spot. 
what you're going to do, what you're going to say, and the dialogue's basically written on the fly, um, or, you know, just thought up on before take. Mm. So you have a lot of sequences where people are forgetting their lines, or they can, obviously they've just shot it where they've done the line, but you can tell they're struggling to remember it. Oh. Um, you Ooh. have fight scenes that repeat shots over and over again, so it feels like it's been edited by someone with dementia. Nice. Um, and as I say, there's zero plot, so you just end up walking. He, he walks through this kind of wasteland, bumping into these people, all these weird psychedelic moments, which I think sort of garnered this kind of reputation as this kind of trippy movie to watch mm. at these kind of, you know, flea pit cinemas. And um, sort of gave, made it a, well, gave it a cult following, I suppose, because they made two sequels. Well, let's see... I'm doing this off the top of my head. If I had any sense, I would have actually looked this up first. But I seem to remember there's actually technically one sequel they made and then the video company just edited together clips of the other films and claimed it was another film. That's mad. Without Scott Shaw, the uh, director-producer's uh, knowledge. Because they're all so just random, yeah. boring shit anyway that you yeah, can just yeah. string it together, you know? Yeah, it's... When you you know when you watch these kind of movies and you think okay well you, the cover's a bit crap or is it always actually in some cases quite interesting and you watch mm. it and mm. they generally are just the, the biggest problem is when once you're bored you know there's no way to, uh, to sort of find any more enjoyment out of it you can watch a movie that's so bad it's good but once being boring I think is the biggest crime that is for any entertainment medium yeah. if you're boring people then you have failed my friends yeah go on I'll quickly read the uh, blurb if any of it is frankly inaccurate just shout rubbish you be prepared to shout rubbish a lot, I imagine. <clears throat> the Earth... They've not even capitalised Earth. Come on, guys. Shocking. The Earth has become a planet of massive industrialization. Machines rule the world and perform all of the labour. Mankind is in decline. Violence is everywhere. The Wheel Zone, not the Spiral Zone, is a realm where the crippled evil overlord Pharaoh, William Smith, re rules with an iron fist. He believes that abducting young women will make him whole again. How does that work? I have no idea. <laughs> Literally made no sense, this film. His, his spiritual advisor, Saint Offender, sends his killing hordes outside of the wheel zone to capture the psychic sister Sparrow from the Master of Light Institute. <laughs> Thus, these are all just names that don't really feature, are they? Oh, God. Yeah. The weird thing, uh, the note I made, actually, was like the, the main villain, he sits in his kind of lair. How it's lit, it's like watching an episode of Nightmare. Oh, and it's got the wonderful green kind of background yeah. lighting. It's this. It's See, comedy. these stills are nice, but they are probably literally stills taken with a camera, aren't they? Oh, God. Um, but where are we? Captain the Psychic Sparrow from the Master of Light Institute, thus provoking Hawk, the only man capable of killing Pharaoh, into the wheel zone. Hawk goes on a quest to save Sister Sparrow's life. Once inside the wheel zone, a place where there is no known word for innocence, what? Hawk must battle through the many deviant zones ruled by vicious gangs. Now it sounds like Streets of Rage. He encounters Desert Marauder and Officer Daryl Skates, who instruct him on survival in the wheel zone. Is, is that accurate in any way? Or only it's, in the loosest I, sense? I, I would say that's kind of accurate, but it's, yeah, in the loosest sense. I mean, it's, they even have the main star in the, on the front cover. You know, That's true. Virtuoso! It's him. Oh my god! It's so him. No! <laughs> <laughs> the only thing worse than Virtuoso. I'm really sorry about that horrible stain that I hadn't actually noticed. <laughs> what, what is he? Is that like sauce or mayonnaise I, I or something? Think more, I think oh, might, don't put. Oh, oh no, I think oh, it might be like custard or something. Oh, I don't know. god. Oh, Uncle Derek. It's nothing else. Don't worry, yeah. folks. <laughs> yeah, oh, no, no. It's I wasn't PG's, implying that. Why is it, it's a PG 13. Yeah. Right? It's a PAL tape. We don't have we don't PG 13. Yeah, age restriction. Two thirteen. Australia don't have PG thirteen, do they? No, they have um, M, don't they? For mature. Yeah, where has this come from? What? What dimension? Yeah, well... this is on the wheel zone, isn't it? Cap Caprini Sandlam Centre, Evander. What? Where is this? What? what, what? I, don't I mean, know. I sent you a digital copy of this to watch, so we yes, haven't actually did, watched the VHS. I wonder if it even works in this. He hadn't rewinded it. Do you think Uncle Derek didn't sit through it? Or... Oh, he's got through that and it's gone. What the hell is this rubbish? Yep. <laughs> it makes no sense, folks. Do not watch this. Oh, Despite God. people saying, oh, it's, a cult. it's got a cult following, don't watch it. Oh. Even if, I suppose, if you watched it maybe high, I don't know. 
you might be able to get through it, but I actually will end up putting you to sleep, to be honest. So, yeah, there one of the are. dullest films I've seen in a while, but also the next movie I have to, have to discuss is uh, just as boring. Brilliant! Yeah, so I, I look forward to it. I've picked the worst. Uh, oh, I should point out before we continue, this Uncle Derek we're talking about is not the same Uncle Derek who does the stories on Cheap Show. That was somebody else's Uncle Derek. <laughs> There's just a lot of uncles called Derek by coincidence. <laughs> right. <clears throat> so, you'll be pleased to hear that the first film I watched was actually really good fun. <laughs> so I had such a good time with it. It is The Warrior. Yeah, bum, bum, bum. Kung Fu. Flying hands. All sorts of crazy shit. The battle for ninja freedom begins. It's nothing to do with ninjas. It's, it's, it's not. It's, yeah, it's, it, that's not what it is. Um, it's Indonesian, in fact. Starring Barry Prima, I think in one of his first films. Is it Prima or Primer? Primer. I like the sound. Barry Prima sounds better. Definitely. Let's say Primer. Barry Premier. <laughs> Barry Premier. <laughs> so uh, this is film is better known as Jacka Sembung or Semberg. No, it's Sembung. Jacka Sembung, the um, name of the main character. But they thought that didn't really translate very well to a VHS cover, so changed it to The Warrior, which does make sense. Uh, so, I mean, look at this. Fighting on the clouds with weird burly men. What? Yeah. They look a little like action figures, don't they? That's stuck in one place. Oh, God, they do, don't they? That's, that's really <laughs> odd. <laughs> move. I'm going to see what the tape is like now. Oh, gosh. Oof. So I did not watch the VHS copy of this because the UK VHS was cut. I watched a DVD, which was uncut, because I want the full Jack Sembung experience. How long, much longer was it then? Uh, it was only a few minutes, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, it was all the exciting action scenes. Apparently this once belonged to somebody called Evan Greaveson. <laughs> Do you think Uncle Derek videos. stole it from him? <laughs> you only put your name on it, we don't want someone to record over it. Yeah, but, well, it is a good film, so, you know, it was good fun. So, apparently this is loosely based on a comic book. Uh, it had four sequels. What? This is apparently the best of them, but, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's an Indonesian film, and it's one of the first action films, I think, made in Indonesia, so it's, like, massively popular over there at the time. It's dubbed over? Yes. Oh, Yes. And it's pretty bloody good. Basically, there's a load of these rebel types um, who are going up against the Dutch, the Dutch colonials, who Ooh. are kind of uh, um, taken over indeed. This is a big political thing at the time, you mm. see. And all the Dutch people in this are played by just native Indonesians with funny moustaches. So that's... Oh, wonderful. Yep, yeah, real quality stuff. Um, there's some bullshit about taxes. They're not happy about it. Pretty boy hero, old Jacka Sembung, Barry Primer there, um, who has a haircut a bit like a spaniel, which I I enjoyed. Um, <laughs> so he's powered by Allah. And I mean, Allah has given him his best super batteries because he's like <laughs> one level below fucking um, story of Ricky levels of power. He really is <laughs> astonishing. Um, so basically, uh, they've captured a load of like these rebels. First sign of trouble, they try and kill them all. Most of them escape because the Dutch are incompetent. Um, Jacka goes out, decides to lead a rebellion. Um, but the Dutch put out a bounty on the warrior. And this bulletproof, fire-breathing hard man takes it up and goes to try and kill Jacka. Um, and Jacka just, like, kills him immediately. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen Karnov. I know how to deal with this, you know. Um, so then the bad guy, the head Dutchman, gets a telekinetic voodoo expert with crazy teeth. Uh, he comes along, um, raises some sort of key item from the dead. Or, or what's his name? Key item, I think, was the character's name, actually. I've got confused my own, my own notes there, but yeah. He basically raises an old enemy of Jacka from the dead. Soldiers raise the village, threaten to murder children. Jacka intervenes and sorts everything. Ah, oh, it's great. But then, old Key Item, who does sound like the best RPG name ever, beats the shit out of Jacka with his weird voodoo powers. <gasps> Jacka is taken prisoner. They nail him to a wall. <laughs> Um, God. Yeah, things don't go well for him. Uh, what happened? The bad guy's daughter falls in love with Jacka, but she's secretly a ninja, so it's okay or something. I don't know, it's bloody weird. Um, she tries to free Jacka, gets caught immediately, and the bad guy is most displeased, so blinds Jacka by, like, fucking his eyes up a treat. Ooh. So at this point, he's completely blind and not, you know, doing as well as you want. Think. Yeah, if I recall, yeah. Mm. He, he didn't have a good time of it. Um, but, yeah, they break out. Uh, what happened? These evil guy turns Jacker into a pig, 
which is something you don't see in modern action films these wait, days. Wait, 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 I feel. Was it like a proper pr- prosthetic thing? Um, yeah, there's kind of a bit of a prosthetic change, then it's just a pig running about. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah. Not as good as Willow, then, with a pig transformation. Uh, no, no. Uh, so, yeah, Jacka's girlfriend is helping him out at some stage. Uh, she's a ninja too, because apparently all the women are secretly ninjas, which is uh, nice. an interesting thing. Yeah. Girlfriend is shot and dies, um, which means Jacka is now free to hook up with the bad guy's daughter. So you, you, have, yeah. you, you, have, you have a plot. I, I, it's, it's amazing. It's absolutely like amazing. <laughs> what a loose plot. Uh, that from some f- friendly wizard turns up, turns Jacka back into a human, and then, in this really long, gory sequence, uses his magic to rip the eyes out of his girlfriend's corpse and place them in Jacka's head so he gets his sight back. What? It's really crazy, oh, yeah. That is mad. Um, bad guy's daughter now turns full, like, anti-imperialist rebel... Uh, tries to lead in Jacka's absence, but then Jacka returns and there's a big fight and everyone storms the military compound and then uh, Jacka kills the bad guy. But then in the bad guy's death throes while he's dying, he just shoots blindly and kills his own daughter <laughs> by accident. So Jacka's love interest <laughs> dies at the end of the bloody film. Yeah. Amazing. Um, so, yeah, obviously it's dubbed. Uh, but the dubbing's fine. It's actually not a bad job for this kind of thing, yeah. A bit like the Jackie Chan films from the early 90s. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a good uh, benchmark, actually. Mm. There's a lot of blood. There's no pissing about. There's always some crazy shit going on constantly. You <laughs> no know, funny yes, about. No, none of this exposition. <laughs> all the things happening all the time. There, well, there is a bit of slow down the middle, but uh, with the hilarious VFX, Do you I'll you let think them they should have called it Key Item? Yes, they absolutely should. It's probably not pronounced like that. It's just the way I've written it. Key Item <laughs> or something, I don't know. But the action, I mean, it's pure slapstick. Uh, super fun. You don't actually see much of Jack Assembong weirdly. There's a lot of other stuff going on with the characters and oh. fighting and that. What's the picture of the film on the back again? Uh, yes, it yeah. was. There's literally only two, but it feels like it's the same shot, like from a different angle. Yeah, uh, yeah. that is the bad... Basically, you can cut things off, the bad guy, and they just stick back on because he's voodoo or something. So you always get dubious, though, because if you see these VHS covers, you think, look at that cover, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rent that. And you look at the back, you think, oh, there's not many pictures of the film. Yeah. And you're like, mm, that's a bit dubious. Um, should I waste my time with that? Mm, probably not. So, no. so that's, yeah, I, I would say... totally recommend it. Probably a hidden gem. Yeah. Um, is it on DVD? Yes, definitely is, because it was a DVD version I watched. Oh, yeah, good point. So, yeah. Uh, my favourite character was some pasty, sweaty Dutch colonial guy who just occasionally looks at the camera while standing in the background. And then t- two-thirds of the way of the film, he just disappears and mention him again. Yeah, it's really odd. It was incredible. It was, it was the best sweaty man looking into a camera I think I've ever seen in a film. It was best sweating I've yeah. seen on camera in years. My God. Um... But one thing that did worry me is when Jacker is turned into a pig, for some reason all the villagers hate the pig and beat it with sticks. It kind of looked like they were actually beating a pig with sticks. Ooh, so it was a bit... Yeah, mm, gosh. yeah, I don't know. Maybe they were just faking it well. But, um, uh, but then the greatest line is when Jacker is escaping from prison. He says, stop, I'll lead the way. They've just pulled his eyes out. <laughs> Didn't think that one through, did you, mate? Stop, I'll lead the way, then he can't see. Oh, Perfect. But, yeah. Shocker. If you can see Jack Assembung, you should watch Jack Assembung. It was really good fun. But only if you're over 18. Well, it's probably like a 12 these days, I don't know. Oh, God, they only reclassified these movies. Like, the Terminator went from 18 to 15. I was like, yeah, that's pretty reasonable. It's, yeah. But you couldn't have to cop, though. Rubber cop was Ooh, still being 18. Yes. No way. Maybe 20 years it'll be a PG. <laughs> <laughs> right. What was your second film of Doom, sir? Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, just for a second, I wish we were filming your face there. That uh, was amazing. The Norseman with Lee Majors. Lee Majors! Six million dollar man. So he's a Viking with a tash. Yes, made in 1978 by Charles B. Pierce. Now, Charles B. Pierce uh, was mostly a writer. He'd written um, a, quite a few successful movies. He did Sudden Impact with Clint Oh, Eastwood. yes, yes. So, you know, okay. he, knows, he knows how to write a good story. Sadly... Uh, this is his kind of... I'm not sure if it was his directorial debut. I can't recall. He may have done something else before. But, yeah, so he written, written, produced and directed this movie. So this is 1978. 78. I think gotcha. some, some people listed it as 79. Uh, basically, yeah, Lee Majors um, plays a Viking and he goes over to America to rescue his father from the Native Americans. Uh, that was a common thing at the time, I believe, father rescuing from Native Americans. Yes. Yeah. All uh, the Vikings were doing the it. Fil- oh, God. Lee Majors is rocking a sort of 1970s kind of uh, 
moustache. Um, lots of rocking cow teats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Four pack. You ain't got six pack, can't have, you know. The post is different. The weird thing is, I showed Stuart beforehand, the poster on IMDb oh, yes. has him with armour on and his mouth's closed. It looks more like he's kind of pouting his lips. But, you know, woman with her ass sticking it out um, is still kind of apparent, apparent on both posters. So they weren't going to change that, were they? Mm. Um, just a bit by Ryan, which is actually, you think, it's MGM. Um, title actually this must be later on they, they picked up and as I mentioned earlier about films which don't have uh, pictures on the back always be oh, careful of, not even a hint of a bloody picture there no no so yeah I mean it's you know shop cinemascope the money's been spent um, the first few minutes you're thinking oh this seems to be okay you know it seems to be well made as soon as they get on the beach and start looking around, thinking, you know, of course, they don't know where they're going. They don't. I, I think the film doesn't actually refer to it as America. I think maybe called Newfoundland or something like that. Oh yes. Um, and they soon get attacked by the Native Americans, um, and every every action sequence is in slow motion. Oh what? what? <laughs> so every attack, the they, obviously when the the Vikings attack the uh, the the Indians, um, it, it's slow motion. And it just drives you insane. Um, the direction is really wonky. It's like they get they get on the beach, and you have there's no sort of geography to any of the shots. So everything feels like it's been cut from just random sections of that location. Oh, brilliant! You just get completely lost. And as soon as you know, Lee Majors is rocking an American accent. There's no attempt to sort of, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, sort of sound sort of Scandinavian. I don't know. Um, oh and they seem to have taken like historical advice from Asterix and Obelix. You know, they're all, <laughs> they're all rocking, drinking like, their potions from Getafix. Yeah, they've all, like, the drink, they're all yeah. got like these, you know, horned helmets, which is you know wasn't the thing with the Vikings. I think they only had horned helmets for celebrations, maybe. I yes, think something about that. Didn't they find a lot of horns in Viking graves and assume they came from the helmets and later discovered they were drinking horns? or yes, something like that. Something like that, yeah, yeah. something to do with celebration, nothing to do with battle. Um, so, yeah, it's completely inaccurate. And then they also, it's sort of a lot of stereotyping as well, the Native Americans. But they seem to have pulled these Indians from like a John Wayne kind of Western. Yeah. It completely doesn't fit with, this is supposed to be set, what? Like hundreds of years before Christopher Columbus popped up, you know, in America. So, yeah, not a uh, particularly historically accurate movie and insanely dull, like oh. The Roller Blade 7. And, and the, and it's not the, as bad as the Rollerblade 7, I, surely. I, I, no, I, I would say not, because Lee Majors always has a slight bit of charm with him. Um, but there's, you know, there isn't much on the movie. If you look around online, there's not, there's, there's, there isn't much information about its production. Um, the thing I found interesting was, if you go on IMDb, there's people who actually talked about this movie when they saw it in the cinema, and they quite enjoyed it as kids. Oh, they, yeah. Obviously, they returned to it as an adult and said, ah. what the hell was I thinking? You know, it's... Yeah, absolutely appalling film. Um, I presume it would have been one of those sort of movies that played uh, sort of matinees or double double oh, feature back yes. in the day, um, because it was yeah it didn't do very well very well at all. It did absolutely you know bombed. Um, I'm not yeah, bloody so surprised with the sounds of it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't waste your time with this if you do discover this. I mean, that, that, yeah, that will win over a kid because if, if you're yeah. obsessed with Games Workshop, you've seen Conan the Barbarian. Oh my God, look at this! North Lee Majors, he's on it, TV. It is he's important. Robot, he's an important film. Look, <laughs> yeah. God. And then yeah, turn it over. You'd be like, yeah. oh, oh, there's no pictures. Well, mm, okay, bit of a risk. But yeah. I mean, Very dull risk. I had I never say. heard of this film. I mean, it's got Lee Majors in it. It's from a major studio. Never heard a word of yeah, it. Yeah, money was spent, but mm. not, <laughs> <laughs> not on the catering. Not, yeah, 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 yeah. Such good sandwiches. Yeah, um, probably um, Lee Majors' moustache, maybe. Uh, ah, moustache wax. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much unwatchable in terms of... Does he rescue his dad at the end? Yeah, of course he does. Of course Yay. he does. But it's... I suppose this... If you were in the... If it was in the 80s, this is a, this is a Sunday afternoon, Channel 4 kind of feature that you uh, just wouldn't pay attention to, but it'd be on. Something's on in the background. This is it. But like a podcast, sometimes you have it on the background. And, uh, yeah. People gas bagging. This is that. <laughs> maybe some regard. This video, basically. <laughs> yes. maybe, my, maybe my channel, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, it's... I, I, well, you sent me a digital copy, so it was a DVD version. I think, yeah. I think those versions are actually like one of those, they're made on demand. Services, oh, like do, um, CDR, DVDR we, yeah, a friend of mine got hold of a copy of Doc Savage, Man really? of Bronze, and that was one of those basically, yeah. literally in the offices of the studio. They burn you a DVDR and send it to you in That's a nice right. case. That's right. Yeah. yeah, I think actually that weird Dolph Lundgren movie, like um, I Come in Peace or Dark Angel, oh. was one of those features. But then 
Shout Factory or Screen Factory put out a version which was actually a proper release. But yeah, I suppose bit, studios shouldn't do that. They shouldn't put out DVDRs to send it by a post. Yeah. Put it out, you lazy sod. <laughs> you know? I'm sure millions of people would like to watch The Norseman. <laughs> My God. Said no one ever. If you had to rate it out of five, what would you give it? Um, I would give it um, 0.5. I think that sounds fair from what you've said, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. It gets a thumbs down of Oz, Roger Ebert. Two yeah. thumbs down, way down. Way down. <laughs> well, you'll be pleased to hear that uh, I didn't do so well with my second choice. <laughs> this was a film that I unfortunately watched with a group of friends. Now they all fucking hate my guts. <laughs> this is... <laughs> It wasn't me, don't worry. <laughs> this was bad. Welcome to Beauty of the Barbarian. Ooh. I mean, that's an amazing cover. It's not. It's slightly weird it's, it's like a physiology. Weird, uh, but... Like rock album from the 80s. Yes, yeah. it's a yes album. Yeah. A badly drawn knockoff yes album. Something like Magnum. See, something. you've got these werewolf people, you've got this crazy zebra skin wearing woman, you've got this bird man against woman from Barbarian Theatre. This is bullshit. <laughs> There's nothing like this in the film whatsoever on any way, shape or form. And why is that like a French Renaissance Ipe? That's weird. But anyway, yeah, this is utter, utter bollocks. They're enticing people in, like, kids will see this and go, that looks cool. That looks like, you know, medieval kind of, you know, comic book strip thing. Then you see it's 18. Mm. You know. And there's no pictures on the back. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Oh. Yes, God absolutely. Sake. Yeah. So directed by Al Bradley, real name Alfonso Brescia. Yes, uh, yep, it's a very Italian production. I'm going to read you the plot. <clears throat> Wait for it. The kingdom is protected by Dharma, a supposed god made immortal by the flames of the sacred fire. In return for a quarter of their wealth, he protects the villages of the kingdom from the marauding Amazons, a barbaric tribe of women hell-bent on destruction and domination. The queen of the Amazons wants revenge for the death of her greatest warrior and sets out to discover the secret of the sacred fire and gain immortality from their flames. A bloody battle ensues, man against woman. That sounds all right. None of that is in the film. What? Literally none of that is in the film, except a weird thing where they talk about the flames near the end. Because Beauty of the Barbarian is a butchered re-edit of a film called Battle of the Amazons, also known as Amazons, Women of Love and War. That rings a bell. Mm. This is, and it's basically, they've cut out seemingly all the stuff about that, as far as I can tell. There's piss all about it in there. So how long is the film, then? 90 minutes. Bloody hell, that's a, that's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? Yeah. And I watched it directly from this VHS. So it, oh, it's absolutely this version. No, because I heard that Beauty of the Barbarian is kind of a different edit. It isn't just a case of there's some stuff missing. It's a case it feels different as a film. Right. So if I had to watch the original for authenticity reasons. So what actually happened was there's like a village hassled by man-hating Amazons who capture men for slave labour. Uh, they kill the father of this woman called Valeria who is apparently Doctor Doom squeeze in marble, but uh, we'll get around that. Uh, some guy called Zeno, whose girlfriend is killed, uh, they cut off his arm off or something. Valeria hires three bandits to teach the villagers how to fight, saying fight off the Amazons. Yeah. Um, so the bandits teach the villagers to fight by kicking the living shit out of them. <laughs> Like, they really beat the shit out of them. Wow. There we are, you can fight now. Thanks, guys. Uh, Valeria falls for this Zeno guy with the one arm. She's engaged to some other guy. The other guy convinces some other villagers they can't win and to go and basically rat everyone out to the Amazons. And it's like, oh, please don't hurt us, strong Amazons. <gasps> um, so there's some, some Amazon priestess stuff that's never expanded on, which apparently is the plot mentioned on the back, but that's not really in it. Um, there's some topless torture scenes, which were mildly unpleasant. Uh, and there's a final battle against the Amazons, where they've clearly the Amazons are replaced by men in wigs and masks. Is it uh, shot well? Quite clearly, it's like, it's not insanely really. Cheap. It's very. It's, it's not insanely cheap, but uh, it's not expensive. It's kind of very much Italian eighties film of that era. Oh, it's, it's like it's like seeing a red brown kind of action. Novel absolutely, like absolutely. You could you could take a few frames. And it could be from any of those films. You know. I mean, is it, does it look so bad they didn't put any pictures on the back due to embarrassment? <sighs> Uh, no, I think you could have got away with a couple of the fight scenes, maybe, but mm, they just AV, didn't want to. AVR? No you bloody idea I mean, I just thought it would be like, distributed by Barbarian Theatre. <laughs> One film. <laughs> so the, I must elaborate on the ending, because it makes no sense, right? Um, basically, all these kids that have been kidnapped by the Amazons are brought back. And the Amazons are like, oh, all right, you beat us in this fight. You can have the kids back. And um, Valeria says, ah, oh, the kids are back. We will teach them how to love. 
Ah, uh, and then like a load of villagers near the bottom of a hill and look really weirdly at the hill and it holds the shot and it ends. I'm like, what the fuck's that hill? What's going on? And I, I ended up looking into it and discovered again it's an edit from the original um, Battle of the Amazons thing. And what happens in the original edit, which I watched on YouTube, is Valeria says, we will teach them how to love. And then Zeno says, this world was made for hate. Not love. We must teach them for fight to fight, for the Amazons will be back. And then you see the Amazons at the top of the hill, and it scrolls, uh, you know, pans down, and you see the villagers looking up at the Amazons, going, "Oh, those bastards will be back." And then ends. And like that ending makes sense, but when you cut out the other shots, it's just some people looking at a hill. It's absolute nonsense, and it's boring as hell. And any sense that the film had has been edited out of it. But other than that, it's brilliant. No, oh. not really. It's awful. <laughs> So you've had two films with kind of interesting stories, uh, I suppose, out of... Uh, uh, compared if, to Norseman and The Roller Blade 7, which would have so dire and dull. Uh, this is probably... Well, I, I would have said this is probably worse than Norseman, from what you've said. Because my entire but, recap there is stretched over 90 minutes of nothing. It's oh. awful, awful, oh. awful, awful, boring nonsense. I suppose you've got, like, two edits of the movie to sort of string together, I suppose, some kind of so, yeah. enjoyment out of it to think, OK what this movie could have been or the alternative version of it. Yeah, or the um, proper version. The proper before it was version, ripped, yeah. had its guts ripped out. If anyone watching this is seen the proper version of it, then sort of uh, it'd be interesting to know how radically yeah. different it is. I imagine it's still dull, but at least holds together, whereas yeah. this is just kind I mean, of a nothing. I mean, I don't... A big, fat nothing. I never usually hear that many positives from mm. Italian kind of knockoffs of these yeah. kind of, of genre types, you know. Uh, they're often just, like, done on, on super cheap. But I, I suppose it's somewhat enjoyed for their sort of schlockiness. But. There's just not enough in it. And it's it's cheaply, badly done, generally. It's mm. competently shot, mostly, is the nicest thing you can say about it, to be honest. <laughs> they turn the cameras on. There we uh, go. Dear. Yeah, exactly. Do something, <laughs> lads. Go on. <laughs> Got to go home in two hours. Right. Well, thank you very much for joining me on this episodic episode through uh, <laughs> Uncle no, Derek's no problems, VHS yeah. collection. Um, <laughs> if people watch it, we'll do it again in the future. Yeah, we've got a couple other schlocky movies on the be behind oh, this. So yes, there's many on the show. One's there. already enticed me. Uh, oh. Cyborg Cup. Oh, good luck. That looks so good. There's Robo Warriors. I think that's some kind of sequel, possibly, to... Um... I'm doing it again, Stuart. I'm okay. choosing <laughs> <based on> the cover. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. I've just completely <laughs> forgotten what I've just said. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what's Robo Warriors? Is that some sort of sequel to um, Robot Jocks? I can't remember. Let's put that on. Let's, no. let's have a look at that. Yeah, go on. Let's look quick through the cover. And then annoy everyone because we'll never cover it. Look at that cover. Oh. Well, I don't know what's going on here. Is that a leg and someone's lifted him up? What yes, it is based on characters created by Stuart Gordon. Yep. Oh. Right, I'll do this one. You do Cyborg Cop, and then we'll pick another two each, secretly off camera. Swish. Nice. James Remar. Oh, my God. The Phantom, Judge Dredd, Blink, The Cotton Club, 48 Hours, His Own House, His S Toilet. SFX done by Stargate Films. They worked on Ghostbusters 2? Apparently. Highlander 2. Oh. But they only spent one week on this film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Mr. Oliver, where can people find you on the YouTubes? If you go to YouTube, obviously, put in Oliver Harper and you'll find my stupid mug and click on that and you'll find my retrospective reviews and audio commentaries, which Stuart has been taking part in doing the Canon films over the last couple of weeks, I suppose. No, more than a month, actually. We've done quite a few. Yeah, we have. Yeah. I'm always up for Canon films, man. Exactly. Right, thank you very much. We're going now. Bye. Bye. Like, boy, boy.